Hi, Cassie. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, so, Cassie, tell us a little bit about you. Well, um, I am an Enneagram 5. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. It's like a personality test. Uh, the number five is the investigator. So the reason I'm sharing this part first is it makes the rest of it a lot clearer. <laughs> okay. Um, and it kind of makes it clearer that um, why I would want to help with this. But basically, um, my biggest desire is to be seen as capable and competent um, and not obviously not to be seen as useless or helpless. Um, so like that's kind of at the core of who I am. Mm -hmm. So um, when I went to school, I got my bachelor's in marketing management. Um, I did that in less than four years wow. um, because somebody told me nobody ever gets their degree in four years anymore. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> so, of course, I had to. Um, I have a master's in elementary education and I got married in between the two. So I've been married for about 14 years. Um, so I'm an educator, specifically an assistant principal. Um, I've taught most grades from kindergarten up to sixth grade, either in general education or in special education. And then um, I'm a certified Microsoft Innovative Educator and an Apple teacher. So as far as like computers, I'm kind of bilingual, I guess. Yeah. And then uh, more recently, I earned my Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt, and I'm studying for my Project Plus certification. Well, that's impressive to have a Lean Six Sigma just... Just, I mean, it doesn't matter what color belt, just it's impressive because it's a lot of work. It was, yeah, it was not easy, but yeah, like, like I said, I like, I like to learn and that's that investigator in me. So yeah. Um, well, that's awesome. And you're doing, what are you doing right now? You said you're an assistant principal. I am. Okay. Um, I'm actually, yeah. Um, assistant principal, we're at K, I'm at, I'm at a K-8 school. Okay. Um, so we have kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. Yeah. So, so what would others say about you if I were to ask them what your biggest accomplishments are? What would they say? Um, probably I would say that, um, like, when I set a goal, I reach it. Like, whatever my goal is, I'm going to reach it. Like, I became an assistant principal. Like, my goal was to do it by a certain age, and I did. Um like, so I think that would probably be, um, I'm not just a goal setter. When I set a goal, I'm going to meet it. Yeah. Yeah. So what has your experience been with imposter syndrome? Um, for me, I think probably the first time that it like kind of became real to me was when I first started teaching. Um, I had gone back to school to get my certification for special ed. And the, it was the week before kids were supposed to come back. And I was sitting in my classroom. I had gone down to the office where they kept the files. And I had signed out one of my students' files. And I was sitting in my classroom with the file in my lap. And, like, I didn't even get past the first page. And, like, I almost had a full-on panic attack. Like, I don't even know what I'm reading. This doesn't make sense. And so, like, I just set it to the side. And I'm like, okay, let me just start rearranging the classroom like maybe I'll start with that and so I did that for a few minutes and and then it was like well I can't really arrange the classroom until I know the kids let me go get the file again and so like I just kind of did that like going in circles for a few minutes and like it just basically felt like a panic attack mm -hmm. uh, I, now looking back I'm pretty sure that's what it was but I wasn't really even sure like I knew I knew what I was doing but at the same time I felt like if I didn't do it the right way, was everybody else going to look at me and say, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. Uh -huh. She doesn't have any business being here. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, that was the first time, which I hadn't really thought about it that much until I started really thinking about doing this interview. And I think there's probably other places in my life, but that was the first time that I really thought, I know what I'm doing. Why do I feel this way? Yeah. Yeah. So Hold on, somebody with a very loud muffler is driving by. This is my life. I'll edit this part out. I live on a corner, so we get all the noises. Gotcha. I think it's gone. So is that the only time that you have experienced imposter syndrome? I mean, is it something that you still struggle with? 
No, yeah, I definitely still struggle with it. Um, a couple of years ago, before I became a full-time assistant principal, I was asked to fill an interim position, and um, or I was asked if I would be interested. And that was kind of my, I, I, I went back to that, like when I walked into that office, it was kind of back to that, like, okay, wait, now what? Um, and again, I had gone back through school again and gotten my certification to do it. And I had been helping with that type of position for a while, but just like officially having the role, I felt like maybe even put a different type of weight on it. And so it just kind of um, made it more real, more, I don't know what the right word is I'm looking for, but, um, and even more recently when I started deciding that I wanted to look into instructional design as like the next step in my career, um, even though there's a lot of crossover with material and um, learning processes and um, I, I'm taking in as much information as I can. When I get ready to try to apply for something, that imposter syndrome gets really loud. Like, you don't have any business doing this. Why would they even talk to you? Um, and it and it's hard to kind of put that down and just say, no, I do know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And given the opportunity, I can show that I know what I'm doing. So it's definitely something that's an ongoing. So when you say that it gets really loud, what are you mentioned some of the thoughts i'm assuming those are the thoughts that you're nobody's saying that to you audibly right, right. well i mean you might be able to hear right. it but maybe it's just your own voice in your head but but what are some of the other feelings and emotions that are happening as you're having those you know you have no business being here thoughts um to me it kind of manifests similar to anxiety um kind of that um, you're not good enough. It, and it, it, it is like all in my head. In fact, I was telling my husband that I was going to do this interview with you. And he was like, but you're not an imposter. You know what you're doing? Like, so even that close to home, like he sees it, sees me totally different than I do. Um, but for me, it just kind of manifests almost as an anxiety um, type situation. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, do you have any physical reactions that you've noticed? Um, definitely. Um, like I will get, I will make myself physically ill. Um, if I don't get a hold on it, like if I don't like make myself, okay, stop, you know, think this through, like, um, yeah, I, I, and I have been, even when I was like in high school, the doctor would tell my parents that I was getting tension headaches. So even back then, I was getting headaches based on stress. And now looking back, I think it was along the same lines. Mm -hmm. I never felt like it was like, you know, I've always been, um, you know, school and that kind of thing always came easy to me. But I never really felt like I was, it doesn't matter how much I know. Yeah. Like I didn't feel like it was good enough. I needed to know more mm -hmm. to be able to present that. Yeah. So how do you, you cope when you, when you have, you know, when you feel like you're, you know, having an episode of imposter syndrome, you know, are there techniques you put into practice or is there anything that you do that makes it better? Yeah, for me, um, it's a lot of just, stopping to ask myself okay stop and take a breath and then why are you feeling this way you know is is this thing whatever it is is this something you're qualified to do and if it is then allow yourself to feel that way like allow yourself to feel like i am qualified to do this and believe that and own it and then you know um i forgot now who it was it may have been Albert Einstein, somebody that said, like, you know, there's always going to be somebody in the room smarter than you. And like, for me, that was a struggle. I like to be the smart one. Like, I've worked really hard to be the smart one. And so um, to be okay with, I'm not going to be the smartest one in the room. And that's really good. That's a good thing. It's actually a like, really you good want to thing. Surround your mm -hmm. Right. 
And so for me to go, okay, I need to take a step back and I need to reframe how I see this. Like I'm in a room with people who are smarter than me and I can learn from them and not see it as they're smarter than me. So they're looking down on me. And it was kind of, for me, that was, uh, I had to kind of take a moment to reframe how I saw that. But um, to answer your question of how I cope with it is making myself stop and think through it. Like, be realistic about where things are right now. Mm -hmm. Like grounding um, is a term they use with anxiety. Um, and then music. Music is my go-to. Um, to, for me, music makes everything better. I even have like a playlist. It's just for like when I need to chill out. Um, and so like just whatever your thing is, if you find that thing and then have that as your go-to prepared in advance, so that if you're feeling that type of way, you know, okay, let me just take a step back and figure out why am I feeling this way? Is it legitimate or am I feeling this imposter syndrome? And then, you know, if you're qualified and you know you're qualified, allow yourself to feel that and believe it about yourself. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, what What's your music choice? I'm just curious. Um, usually... I, I like all kinds of music. I have just about every genre you can imagine on my phone. Um, but I, the, my chill out is like all like, um, I guess what you would call like easy listening kind of like real kind of chill music. Uh, my husband makes fun of me because I was born in the 80s and he was born in the 70s. And um, my one of my favorite stations that we have on Sirius XM is called Yacht Rock. And most of it is from either before I was born or when I was really young. But like, I love that station. It's just kind of real chill. And for the most part, that's kind of my persona. I'm, I'm, I'm that way until I get anxious about something or something like that. Yeah. But um, so that's usually my go-to. Yacht rock. Good to know. Um, yeah. What would you share with someone who is experiencing imposter syndrome right now? I would say, um, like I mentioned before, is to stop and breathe and then ask yourself, am I qualified for this? And objectively answer that. Like not within your imposter syndrome self, but objectively answer. Maybe even ask somebody else because maybe you're not able to answer it objectively right now, but ask somebody else. And then if the answer is yes, believe that about yourself. If the answer is no, find out why. And then if you want to build on that, build on that. But then if you need to make it, you know, make it a mantra, you know, that you're qualified and you can do this or, you know, whatever um, you need to do to help yourself believe that you are qualified and you can do whatever it is you want to do. Yeah. All right. So last question for you. Um, why did you want to be part of this imposter syndrome project? What sort of pushed you to say yes? I think for me, um, it was because it, it's funny when, when you ask, like, as soon as I read it, I was like, oh, me, me, me. Because I feel like that is such a big part of who I am. I struggled so long with I needed to be the most capable, the most competent um, because I felt like if I wasn't the best of whatever, that I didn't have anything to offer. Hmm. And once I figured out that um, even, like I said before, it, it's better to have other people in the room who are smarter, who are better, who are whatever, um, because you can learn from them. And I think too often we're told you have to be the best and the brightest and the whatever. Um, but for me, it was a struggle to, if I can't be the best at it, I'm not going to do it. And so this kind of, I don't know, touched a nerve or touched my heartstrings, just that I can always strive to do better, but I don't have to wait until I'm the best to step forward and say, Hey, I have something to offer. Mm -hmm. Very cool. 
Well, we appreciate that you did that and that you stepped forward and were vulnerable and shared your story. Um, we really appreciate that. So thank you, Cassie. Thank you. If you like this series and you want to show support, go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash if you ask Betty to learn more about how you can support this and future if you ask Betty projects.